All right, we're trying this again. We're going to do another resin infusion, and I pray and hope that it works a lot better this time. Uh, I've gotten some feedback from some people, some pointers, some tips from people at, uh, that I'm hoping to implement and see how these work uh, when we actually try this again. Same lamp as last time. It's, it's seven plies of, uh, of regular standard uh, six ounce per square yard carbon. Um, we're alternating 0, 90, and 45. Uh, I've got my brand new vacuum pump. That was one of the biggest things that I heard from, and feedback from my last video is that you just gotta have solid vacuum. And my old pump just couldn't deliver solid vacuum. So hopefully this one will work a little bit better and, uh, it, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we've got everything set up. It's really important when you're doing composites work, make sure everything is in place and ready to go before you begin. Because you don't want to get halfway through a lathe and realize you've got to find something that you don't know where it is and you need it right then and your resin is curing. It's just, it's a mess. So don't get yourself in that situation. Make sure everything is set up and in, in like a hand's reach before you start your layup. Carbon's in place. Um, got my, my bag seal of tape all the way around. This is uh, just a standard piece of, of, of glass, just normal glass. I went ahead and waxed it with two coats of part all number two. 14 mil mylar. Uh, same stuff I used last time. Again, two coats of part all number two, uh, mold release wax. One other thing that I'm gonna add this time that I didn't have last time is this stuff. This is a, um, it, essentially what it is, is it's, it's some plastic tubing that got cut on a spiral. That's really all it is. And um, what this does is you put it along the edge of your, your part, the resin can flow into it, and it acts as a channel to help the resin flow across, and then you have a constant feed from one side as it feeds across to the other. So hopefully you get a more, more even flow of epoxy from one side to the other, rather than having it, you know, get, getting bare patches or patches that don't get infused properly. So I don't know if I need this for this particular part. Um, it seemed like it was working pretty well last time, and up until the vacuum pump mess ups. Um, but just, I'm just going to try it. I've got the piece on hand. Um, you can actually, you can get this stuff from composites suppliers. Uh, I didn't. This is actually, as far as I can tell, it's the exact same stuff as they use for uh, wire management. I had some left over from my CNC when I did my wire bundles for my CNC. And I tell you what, you buy the stuff for wire management and it's a lot cheaper. So um, that's what I'm going to try and see how well that works. Let's go ahead and get right to it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel up. This is just protecting my VST. This is going to be the vacuum line. And I'm going to have that come in right here. And what I'm going to do is I used um, peel ply last time. I'm just going to use a paper towel this time for my breather. I don't need a whole lot, I'm just going to need a bit. I'm going to wrap that around the end. All it's got to do, I, I put way more stuff in there than I really needed last time. This needs to protect the vacuum bag from getting punctured from the sharp end of the tube. And then it needs to provide a way for, for the air flow um, from the fi fibers into the, the pump so you can actually pull vacuum across the entire thing. And that'll do, and we'll just have them touch each other. They don't need to be anything crazy. Just got a touch. Excellent. Now, this stuff, because it's, it's spiral wrapped and it can stretch a little bit, I'm actually able to stick this just stick this into, or stick my tube right into it. Now the tube can lay across like that. Piece of tape to hold that down. Another piece at this end. Okay, mylar just goes right over the top.
and take some extra back sealant tape and this is going to go around the tube where, where they come in to the vacuum bag over here. Okay, vacuum baggy film. Uh, this isn't the same stuff I had last time. This is a clear stuff. It's, it's still vacuum baggy film. This isn't like, this, I'm not using drop cloth like I talked about. Uh, you can't, I don't think there's any issue with it. I've used it before for vacuum bags, but uh, I've got this on hand again, so I'm going to use it. I kind of like that this stuff is clear because it allows me to see everything that's going on inside a bit easier than the orange stuff, which was mostly opaque. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my vacuum gauge. All right, we're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and see how it sucks down with the vacuum applied. All right, pulled down nice and quick. Just going to work this down around the edges, especially at these connectors. I'm going to work it in a little bit by hand. I want to make sure we have a really good solid seal. And Looks like we're, we've got a little bit of a leak, but um, before I fix that, I'm noticing that my my spiral tubing didn't actually, it, it ended up farther outside the part than I wanted. I'm going to have to pull that up and, and adjust it. So we'll go ahead and lift up the corner of the vacuum bag. And again, that's not something I probably would have caught if I had been using the orange bag. So I'm kind of glad I'm using this clear stuff this time. It's a real advantage to using clear vacuum bagging material, especially when you're, when you're just first starting out. And it's nice to be able to see everything inside the vacuum bag. I'm just going to tuck it all the way under there, stick the tape back down. All right, let's try this again. And that's what we're wanting right there. Not leaking at all. All right, we went ahead and did a leak check, and we're holding pretty steady right at about 26 inches of mercury. That's good vacuum, and it's solid. It's been sitting there for about five minutes now, and we've had next to zero leak rate. We've lost maybe 0 0.1 inches of mercury, somewhere around there. So I'm comfortable with that. We're going to go ahead and move forward with the infusion. Got my resin mixed up. Let's go ahead and get to it. That worked so much better than last time. I am tickled to death with how well that worked. Um, but before we crack it open, there's a couple lessons learned um, that I'd like to share with you. First of all, this the, the, the spiral thing, like that stuff actually works really, really well. As soon as I plugged it into the resin, it started sucking it through. Instantly, you could see it start bleeding from, from here over. Like it just shot straight through there and started working its way over. Worked really, really well. The stuff's cheap enough that I'm just gonna use it from now on. Um, the other thing, now, a mistake that I made, well, I don't know if mistake is the right word, but something that I learned. Um, the mylar, if you looked at it, the, the mylar actually, right here along this edge, it hangs over the carbon. 
it, on this edge, the carbon sticks out. On this edge, the mylar hangs over the carbon. And what that meant was that there was a channel right along there that allowed resin to flow through it. And so it acted almost like, like this, this coil here, except it was on this side of the part as well. And that wasn't intentional. And so the resin started along here, and then it worked its way from here inward, and this was the last corner that got infused. That was not intentional. Um, and the only bad part about that is that the resin reached my inlet tube, my vacuum tube, first before it got to, before it infused the entire part. Um, a, a minor thing, because it ended up working out just fine anyway, but uh, started sucking some resin into there before we actually had finished infusing the part. Again, it worked out just fine anyway. And then the last thing I think is worth mentioning is that I sucked the resin in, and you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but in real life I could see it, that this whole area right here had bubbled up a little bit, just a little bit, not a ton, with some extra resin. There was more resin in the layup than there needed to be. Now, as soon as I kinked the hose and clamped it and, uh, and stopped sucking resin in, then it just pulled all that out and it was just fine. It infused the rest of it and it sucked it. It ended up sucking the excess out through the tube. And so we have a net layup that's, that's the right thickness, or it should be. And we'll measure it with the, with the calipers when we get there. Um, but it ended up sucking a lot of resin out. In fact, I don't know if you can see this, but in this tube, there's a whole bunch of resin just all up in there. Maybe used about 12 inches of the tube that I had not expected to use. Not a big deal. I would rather have that happen than have bare spots, dry spots in my layup. So I'd rather not try to get the exact right amount of resin in there. I'd rather have a little extra and spend 10 cents on some extra tubing to just replace the stuff that got filled up with epoxy when we were done. Not a big deal. But let's go ahead and get this thing open and see how it turned out. There we go. Not too shabby. No pinholes whatsoever. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look how glossy that is. Surface finish does not get any better than that. To check the uh, thickness. Thickness is 0 0.062 on that side. See how it looks over here. 0 0.061 over here. So it's quite consistent across the plate. My gosh, I am just thrilled to death with that. But oh my gosh, guys, look at this surface finish. Look at the quality of this. That's what resin infusion gives you. No porosity, a clean, beautiful surface on both sides, by the way, which is super awesome. Uh, this is a really, really beautiful piece of carbon fiber. Guys, I am tickled to death with how well this project turned out. I've learned a few things. I hope that you try this at home. Give it a shot. You don't need fancy, crazy tooling. You can do it with a $60 vacuum pump and a few pieces of carbon fiber and a piece of glass. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.